So we are going to do two versions of a couscous salad. Um, couscous is Mediterranean, so it's a really nice, um, diverse salad that you can put almost anything into. It can be served hot or cold, um, which is really nice. So um, you guys all got your packages and we have everything that you have um, laid out here. The only thing I don't have is tempeh, which hopefully a couple of you guys got some tempeh to try. Um, but we have our couscous. Um, hopefully everybody's cooked the couscous. It's, we have two different kinds. I know you guys just have one, but we have one hot and one cold. So that way you can see them both when they're finished. Um, can you see that? Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna start with the ingredients. Does anybody have any questions about the couscous before we start to actually look at the ingredients that we're gonna use? Okay. If it's overcooked, it's okay. Just drizzle a little oil, take your uh, fork or spoon and toss it through. Um, it will be, it'll be really nice and it'll still work out for you. All right, so we're gonna start with our dressing. So you're going to need uh, your olive oil, your um, vinegar. We gave you red wine vinegar. Balsamic vinegar is also um, an option. Champagne vinegar is also an option. And then we're going to take our dry herbs, our red peppers, and that's it for this, right? So in the beginning, when you're making a vinaigrette and you're using dry herbs, Something you want to remember is the hydration level of the dryer. So whatever you make today will be even better tomorrow. So um, we're going to start with our dry herbs. Take a hearty pinch, not the whole thing. Take a nice hearty pinch and just pop it into your bottle. Right? What was that? Uh, and you're going to take your dry herbs and you're just going to take a really nice big pinch of dry herbs and add it to your bottle. Okay? Now the red pepper flakes are optional. So you can use the red pepper flakes or if you don't like spicy, you don't have to. Um, but the red pepper flakes, just another pinch into your bottle. What it does actually add some levels of flavor versus just one level of flavor, okay? So we just have in our bottle right now, we have our um, dry herb and we have our red pepper. Next, we're gonna do our shallot and our garlic, okay? So you're gonna take one of your garlics, okay? Once you have it in front of you, you can use a saute pan, a pot, your knife, um, and you're just gonna lay it over top of it, and then you're just gonna, you're gonna pop it. You can hear it crack. And you can see it kind of smashes down for you. And we're gonna take that and drop it into our bottle. So we just drop it right in. Okay, so now you have your garlic, your herbs, and your red pepper flakes. We don't need to mince up the garlic um, unless we want to add it in um, later. But as far as your dressing goes, when you're making a dressing, just a crack or pop clove is plenty to get that vibrant flavor that you're looking for. Okay. Our next is, is going to be our shallot. So take your shallot. And we're only going to use half of it. So if it's already cut in half, just set one half off to the side and use one. But the best way to do this is going to be to slice down in half and lay it down again so it's level. And then try to slice two times down. Okay, so then you have all these little layers. Okay. And then from there, depending on your skill level, you can grab them and then you're just gonna do small little shades. We call it mincing, but if you can mince them, that's what you're looking for, is just to mince up half of your shallot, okay? Once you have half of the shallot mince, go ahead and add it to your bottle. Um, if you don't feel like you've gotten your shallot small enough and you want them even smaller, you can always just, it's called a rocker, 
If you put your knife tip down, put your hand on top of the tip of the knife, on top, and then you're just going to rock the knife over the shallots. And this will allow you to kind of cut them a little bit more to get a, a finer dice on them or a finer mix. Okay. Once we have that, then we can come in and just add them all to our bowl. How are we doing so far? Is everybody okay? All right. So we're not going to add our vinegar right away. We're going to allow, like I said, we want to have that um, oil penetrate the herbs to open them up. So you're going to take what's left of your vinegar or your oil, sorry, and you're going to pour it into your bottle. So now we have our herbs, our red pepper flakes, our shallots, and our smashed garlic. And now you're just going to set it aside. Yeah, it's four ounces of oil that we gave you guys. So um, it's a little bit over four ounces with the whole cups. So you're just going to pour that into your bottle. And now that that's in there, we're going to allow it to ferment a little bit. So put your lid on it. I have a question, Tanya, really quick, sorry. Absolutely, go ahead. Are we pouring both of these? Just right now, you're just doing the oil. This one, the only oil, okay. Yep, so right now we're just putting oil. Tanya, since I used some of that oil for my um, couscous to like settle down, do I have to add more? This is olive oil, should I, or this is good enough? No, what we're gonna do is when we go to add the vinegar, you're just going to add a little less vinegar. Oh, I got it. Yeah, because you technically won't need all of this vinaigrette for your couscous salad. You're just going to need enough to coat it. Got it. Okay. All right. How are we doing? I'm a man. So just give it a little shake to pull those herbs up through the oil and let it sit off to the side. That's gonna start to bloom all those dry herbs that are in there. Mixture of oregano, thyme, rosemary, um, I think a little sage is in there. Um, we blended it here. So um, yeah, so it's a, it's a nice herb mixture. If you want it, you can add salt and pepper, but I always wait to add that to the very end, okay? All right, so um, now that we have that working, we're gonna come back in and look at some of your other ingredients that we gave you. Um, so if you look, this is the couscous you gave. <coughs> Sorry guys. We have the couscous. Yeah. Then we have the cherry tomatoes. Now, if you see, we've sliced them in half long ways. Depending on um, what salad you're doing, you could quarter the tomatoes, you could cut them in half um, on the shorter side. Um, but long ways presentation wise is always better. Plus, when um, you go to mix them in, they're gonna they're gonna hold um, their shape a little more um, without losing anything. Um, on the back side, we have your baby squash. We have the summer green and the summer yellow. The reason I chose these two um, are because you can eat them raw, and they're just as good raw as they are cooked. Um, I prefer these raw, but you could saute them in a little butter um, if you're doing the hot salad. So you would just saute these up in a little butter. So what Sean's gonna do on the side is he's gonna saute some up for us so you can see the difference. So just grab some on our Okay. Um, and then we have over here, we have two different meat that we gave you. We gave you pepperoni, which is pepperoni. Um, and then we gave you a, a house-made capicola. So we cured that in-house for four months and um, seasoned it and cured it. So there's probably four different varieties out there, some a little bit more spicier than others. You can eat the Capicola raw um, because it's been cured, um, or you can um, saute it if you want it to be a little warm or to render out some of the fat. It's up to you. But um, it has a beautiful flavor. It's really rich and vibrant. Each one of them turned out amazingly good. 
Um, so yeah, so we do this in house. So the capital is done by the students. Um, and then over here we have our mozzarella balls, which are boca tea. Um, we have the boca tea, and then we have the, the spare. Uh, sorry, artichoke. Artichoke. <laughs> Um, now, what we're going to do with these is we're going to dice up everything to make sure that they fit into your salad and they're still visible, right? So with your squash, you have two options. You can cut it in half through the stem. Don't remove the stem. It's still good. It's not woody. Or you can take it and you can quarter it. So if you've got some of the smaller baby squash, I would just have them. Um, which is kind of like these. If you got some of the smaller ones, I would just put them in half. Um, and if you got some of the larger ones, maybe quarter them up. So you can go ahead and do that now. And also um, cut your tomatoes in half. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll, I'll show you how to slice the pepperoni and the capicola. Okay. Um, as we're doing that, um, with your bocatinis, when you get to your mozzarella bowls, some of you were able to get mini bocatinis, and some we just gave the regular bocatini. If you've got a mixture, it's your choice whether or not you want to uh, cut the bigger ones or you want to leave those bigger and then still have the small little minis. But while we're, um, while we're working together on dicing, I'm going to come through and I'm just going to put mine in half. Right, so that's what they would look like in half. So they're a fairly good size when you look at some of your other ingredients that you're gonna be putting in, right? So if you're taking a selection of everything that's in, you're gonna see that they're, they're pretty good just sliced in half. If you wanna go smaller, you can quarter them just like you would everything else. And then that would be more towards your, your meat selection that we gave you, okay? How are we doing? Any questions? Any questions? All right. So you have your bocatini to slice up. You have your tomatoes and your squash. It should be fairly simple. Um, with your artichokes, it's really um, up to you how you want to do it. I would go smaller. So I would just go down the line, right? So when you lay them out, they're, the hearts are pretty much pointed and you just can slice, make four slices and that's a pretty good size. So when you go to toss it through, it will fall apart a little bit, um, but not as much as you think. Okay. All right. Anytime that you're making um, the question. Oh yeah, absolutely. So how much of each we need? Um, I would do all of them. All of them, okay. Yeah, so everything we gave you um, is a good portion for the, for the amount of couscous that you have. Right. Yeah, Thanks. I just have smaller portions because I'm doing two different kinds. So um, just to give you guys options. But yeah, definitely go ahead and uh, cut up or cube or slice everything that you have. Should we be combining them into like a big bowl after we? Uh, not yet, because they're going to go into your couscous at different stages. Um, everything had like when you're when you're making your salads, you're going to build it. So it's the same when you do pasta salads. So you just start out with your pasta, and then you choose the most heartiest, which is going to be your meat, and they're going to go in, and we're going to toss them through. And then we're going to come back and grab the, the squash and then the tomatoes and then the bocatinis. And then we're going to end with the olives and um, the artichokes because they're more delicate and they're going to fall apart more. So we just want to give a light toss at that part. So um, once you have everything cut up, then we'll, we'll start with putting things together, um, cutting our pepperoni too. Sonia, I have a quick question again. So the oil, just the onion and the herbs and the red pepper, right? That was it? 
And the garlic, and that's it. Oh, the garlic. See, I knew I was missing something. Okay, just one. thank you. You just need to pop one. Just kind of give it okay. a little pop and then throw it in your bottle. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Antonio, um, the tomato, you said only cut it in half. Yeah, I would cut them in half. They're really nice, beautiful cherry tomatoes. So if you cut them the long way, they're going to really show out in your salad and give you color and texture at the same time. Anytime that I'm going to cook up the vegetables, I tend to use olive oil if I'm putting a vinaigrette onto the salad because that's going to match up with what I'm working with. But if I'm not using an olive oil and I'm just kind of doing a nice cold salad, um, I will use like rice wine vinegar instead of an, a vinaigrette and just use the vinegar and I'll toss that in and I'll cook my vegetables in butter, um, unsalted butter. That just kind of gives you a different taste and texture than what uh, olive oil gives you. It gives you a richer flavor. Y'all ready? So when you're doing your vegetables, um, Sean was kind enough to kind of saute some up and you can see how beautiful they still turn out. They're all cooked, um, took like less than two minutes and um, they really have this nice golden color to them. So you're definitely welcome to saute them up if you're making the hot couscous salad um, or the cold. You can always allow them to cool back down and add them in. What that's going to do is add a nutty flavor, a rich flavor to your dish, okay? All right, so we're going to move on into our pepperoni. We gave you capicola and pepperoni. It's really simple to do, but a lot of people struggle with the roundness. So you, you want to go really small, okay? So you just want to come in every... Okay, so you're looking for like little batonets or julians, or steaks, okay? And then from there, you can come through and dice them out. And then you have a really nice little diced pepperoni. Sorry, Tanya, you said for the vegetable, should I uh, um, salt it, like um, put it on the pan with the unsalted or salted butter? Um, unsalted butter if you're going to cook them. Okay. You should always cook everything in unsalted butter. Okay. Um, because then it won't, if you use salted butter, it draws water out. Um, the salt will be the drawer. But then also unsalted butter cooks cleaner um, and actually has a better texture. Um, it's not as oily. So we're just dicing up our pepperoni and our capicola. Like I said, it turned out beautifully. Um, really nice, rich flavors. And together combined, it's going to be amazing. Um, you'll notice when you're cutting the capicola that it has a little flexibility to it. And that's because it was cured in a refrigerator versus dry cured out on the shelf. Um, if it's dry cured in a if it's in the refrigerator, it retains some softness and moisture. Whereas if it was outside on a rack, it would um, dry out completely like your pepperoni. Did. This doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that it's been uh, cured differently. Most likely for a different amount of time. Uh, Lynn, how do you how did you do the sauteed squash? How do you saute the squash? That yeah, that was a question. Um, somebody had a question about sauteing the squash. So all you have to do is put a little bit of unsalted butter in the bottom of your saute pan. 
um, add your squash in and give it until you start to see the blistering happen, um, either on the skin side or on the cut side. But it happens pretty quickly, about two to three minutes because they are very soft and tender. So it does not take long. Um, if you start to smell them, they're done. Um, that's a good sign that it's done. Um, it awesome. uh, what did you say I have to put in the pan? But Unsalted butter. Unsalted butter? Yeah, what if you don't have that, you can use olive oil. Okay. Oh, I, I have a uh, vegetable oil because I That's use all the olive oil in that little thingy. Yeah, so uh, vegetable oil is fine. Just use very little little amount. You don't want to overload and make them greasy. So okay. just use a little bit, heat them up, and then throw them in. Okay. We're not using the basil quite yet. Uh, Rocio, do you have a question? You have your hand up. I think she, I think she was asking about the mint. If we were using the mint yet, uh, and uh, not yet, it's coming. All right. I didn't get any mint. We, yeah, we no. gave you basil. Got mint. I think it's basil. Okay, I can yeah. say. <laughs> I got basil. I ain't got mint. Same yeah. family. Yeah. Same family. <laughs> <laughs> I don't cook. I don't know the difference between mint and basil. <laughs> Sorry. You're all good. I knew what you were talking about. Right. We well, knew you were going to do. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, look okay. at she's got the Lisa. Oh, nice. Very nice. Uh, Eva has a question. She said, should we drain the mozzarella? Yeah, so you can drain the mozzarella or you can just cut them and put them back in there. The liquid is just to keep the mozzarella balls from drying out. It's the natural brining liquid that they made them in. So it's not gonna hurt it if you wanna cut them and put it back. Or since we're getting ready to use them here in a minute, you can go ahead and drain them and make sure they're out of the way. And um, the tempeh, if you've gotten tempeh, you have two options. You can cut the tempeh into cubes and toss it in, right? Or you can saute it like we did the squash and just um, add a little heat with a little oil or a little um, butter and saute it up to add in. Um, the only way I would use the tempeh warm is if I was going to do the warm salad. If you're going to do the tempeh, whole, um, tempeh is a tofu. So not everybody got tempeh, only the people that wanted to be a uh, vegetarian. Got it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you're gonna use tempeh, it's a really nice um, product. It's very versatile. It's really great for frying. So if you wanted to add a different element to your salad, you could just dust them in a little flour and deep fry them, pull them out, and they would be perfect tempeh dried, deep fried tempeh. Um, it works great. So, we're going to get ready. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to come back, how everybody wraps up their cutting, grab your bottle that you had your oil in. If you had a full cup of the olive oil, you're going to add all of the vinegar. If you had a little bit out, I would just add half. So just to start, everybody should just add half of their vinegar. Okay, you can eyeball it. And we're gonna uh, shake it up. Boy, so with these questions is basically, do I do, I'm making the cold salad, but do I do just the raw squash or do I saute it, cool it, it would, one which will taste better? Um, to me, yeah. They're both going to be equally good. The, the one that's sauteed is going to have a roasted flavor to it. Um, and the one that's not, is going to have like an earthy flavor to it, right? It's because it's not cooked. But it will still both be soft. One's just going to be real aromatic, which is going to be the cooked one. Um, when you go to eat it, you'll smell it and taste it at the same time. So it is totally up to you. But, but if you weren't doing these really nice summer baby squash, you'd probably want to saute your, 
your veggie like that. Yeah, if you're gonna buy the older squash, um, if you're gonna buy some that are at the grocery store, if you see that they are a little waxy on the outside, that's a really good indicator that they've been around for months, not weeks. Um, so when you go to do those, I would definitely cook those up. I would maybe slice it in half and do half moons. Um, yeah, so I can show you on, on this cucumber. So if this was a regular zucchini, you would take the zucchini and just slice it down. Of course, it's gonna be way bigger than this. But then you would just do half moons by slicing it through. And you wanna keep it pretty thick because um, zucchini is full of water. All squashes are like 90% water. So when you go to cook it, you wanna cook it quick and you wanna um, use very little oil or butter, um, just enough to get it to break through. And then once it starts to caramelize, you're done. Um, the older vegetables, same will be the same for your tomatoes. You don't necessarily have to buy cherry tomatoes. You could buy romas and dice them. You could buy vine ripes or even, you know, the small little vine tomatoes that you can buy on the vine. Just look and make sure they don't have wax on them. If they do, if they're a little older tomato, they're less as, as uh, vibrant in flavor. Um, also, when you're buying large versus um, small vegetables, the larger the vegetable, the less flavor it has. So if I go and buy a zucchini that's really large, it's not going to be as flavorful as your little baby squash. Okay, um, it's gonna be way less. So you might have to use more to actually get the flavor that you're trying to desire. Um, we have some other things that we're gonna show you in a minute and I'll show you like eggplant is another one. The bigger the eggplant is not the better the eggplant. Um, that goes with just about everything that you come from the vegetable garden, right? right? Bigger carrots are not better. Smaller baby carrots are always better. So okay. it's neighborhood zucchini season right now. So yeah. for your neighbors are passing those off. All right. So right now, just um, kind of circle back around. We have everything diced that we want to use. We've added half of our red vinegar to our bottle. And we're going to give it a quick shake. All right, just half. And then what I suggest you do is put a little bit on your finger and taste it. If you get this really nice blend of oil and vinegar, you're good. If it kind of, jab, I mean, your gels kind of start to water and pull in, you might have a little bit more vinegar than you need. If you want it to be more vinegary, you can always add a little bit more. Um, so I, I think mine is good. I, I like where it's going. Um, it's a nice little rounded flavor. The vinegar should hit you in the back and the oil should hit you in the front. And then the seasonings will come through as you start to put it on your salads. Okay. If it's too like tangy, what would yeah. you do to fix that? If it's too tangy, um, you can add a little bit of oil to it if you have vegetable oil or another oil or a pinch of sugar. Okay. So just take a little bit of white sugar, brown sugar and pinch it, put it in and shake it up. What that's going to do is it's going to round out the flavor and, and um, make the sourness go down a little bit. So anytime you have something that's too sweet, add salt. Anytime that something that's too sour or bitter, add something sweet. And that will balance out your dish for you. Okay. Well, our next step is to put it together. So that's where we're at, okay? So we're gonna do the cold salad first. I'm gonna grab a bigger bowl. So you just wanna have a plain bowl. Doesn't matter what size, just as long as your couscous falls in. You're gonna add your couscous. I'm a firm believer of using your hands because that's where you know, um, you can actually feel what's going on. So I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. Did we chop our mint also? Did I miss this one? Uh, she asked about the basil. Oh, the basil. Sorry. The basil. We're not going to chop it just yet. We want to wait until the very end to cut the basil. Got it. Okay. And then, what if your couscous is still warm? That's okay. Um, it, it will cool down as we go through. 
Um, okay. As long as it's not hot. If it's hot, then you um, want to just run in your cold water again. Okay, so we have our couscous. As you can see, it's um, really nice and fluffy still. It hasn't gotten all gooey on us. Okay, so just kind of spread it out in your bowl. And then from there, we're gonna start with our meat. So we're gonna add a little bit of our pepperoni. You can add a, a little or as much as you want. I kind of start by studying the bowl um, with both of them. And then I'm gonna come through and just use my hand to toss it through. You can use a fork, you could use a wooden spoon, but I'm trying to be easy on the pasta while I get all of the ingredients in there. Okay. Yeah, so you just kind of stud it through. Once you have that in, you wanna to go to your next hardest bit of uh, vegetable, which ours is gonna be the um, squash. You can see mine are pretty big, so I'm gonna come through and probably cut the ones that were in half. And half I've left the stems on because they're super soft. They'll be really nice to eat. So once again, you're just going to fold it through. Okay. All right. So now we have three of our items in there. Our next one is going to be your mozzarella. So just come up and grab some of your mozzarella. And before you toss it, we're going to add our tomatoes. So we're just going to come in and add our tomatoes on top. Okay. Squash. All right. So we have both meats. We have the bocatini mozzarella. We have our squash. And we're just going to use our hands and toss it through. Kind of gives you a good feel of where everything's landing. Okay. All right. Now, before we put in our artichokes, you're gonna take your dressing, give it a nice good shake, and then just lightly over top. Drizzle a little bit. Now, if yours is acting like mine, it's because I didn't dice my shallots up enough. So just kind of tap it on the table, and then you can come back in and do it again. All right. So you just do a little bit at a time because you're just trying to wet it. You're not trying to saturate it. If you saturate it, then you're going to end up with this really mushy salad. You can also cut the, your, um, your bottle spout down a little bit um, to make it easier. As you can see, I didn't do a very good job with mine. Super easy, so. <laughs> mine are kind of mushy because I think the... Um... For the overcook of the couscous. Pasta. Yeah. If it is sticking too in your bottle, you can always take your cap out, put it in your hand, and then use your hand to toss it through. Don't pour it directly onto the salad because then you run the risk of um, kind of putting too much in. So you just want to put a little bit in your hand and then you can kind of toss it through. Grab one of the bigger white plates and we can put that on there. All right, so everything's in except for these um, artichokes. I don't know why I'm gonna call them asparagus today. So I'm just gonna throw a little bit on top. They're not real colorful, right? So we don't um, get too much value other than just the size. Take my hands and toss it. All right, Sean's gonna put a plate down. And now what I wanna do is I wanna place the salad. And now I'm gonna do basil. Well, I'm going to show you how to do a chef and all. The reason we leave it for last is because um, we want to keep it nice and vibrant. And if we do it too soon, we run the risk of um, it turning brown on us. All right. So with your basil, the easiest thing is to do is, um, you don't need to use it all if you don't want to. 
but I always just pull pop off the leaves from the stem. I'll do um, two or three big ones and then a couple of the small ones. And I set them inside of each other so the big ones will be at the bottom. So you can see that they're gonna layer together. And then I'm gonna roll it up like a cigar. Okay. So once we have them all nice and tight, then we can take our knife and we're gonna do what we call chiffonade. And we're making like strings. And you can smell it that the basil is so beautiful. So you have some options here. You can come in and set it right on top in a nice little nest. So that when your guests come, you take your vinaigrette one last time. And right before you serve it, you would just drizzle the vinaigrette on top. Okay? Or you can actually just um, spread it out either way. I like it in the center um, so the oil doesn't kind of get to it too quickly. But um, you have a lot of options when it comes to basil. Chiffonade is the best because it doesn't bruise the paper leaves. It leaves, leaves it nice and green. And it doesn't get um, that dark watery color from over here. Okay, how are we doing? I'm going to put together the warm one really quick. It's just slightly different. Um, so mine is warm. My, my pasta is warm. You can see it's been sitting in my bowl. It's nice and warm. So I'm just going to break it up with my hands. Anytime you do warm salads, you also just want to add a little bit of oil. So that way it breaks up nicely. We'll get it in a second. Okay, so now that it's broken up, when it's warm, I want to, um, I'm going to unscrew my cap after I give it a good shake. Before I'm cold, I added all my cold vegetables first. For warm, I'm going to come in and I'm going to drizzle a lot of it on there. And I'm still going to toss it. But as the oil and the vinegar gets warm, it really starts to bloom inside of the dish. So that's why when we do the warm one, we use a little bit more than what we would on the other one. Okay. On here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some other options with this salad versus the cold salad. These are all great options for um, a cold salad too, but you have your Persian cucumber, the reason we use those is because they have less seeds, um, almost no seeds. And they're really, really fresh. Um, so you can saute them or you can leave them cold. Then we have a variety of peppers. So these are sweet peppers, but um, you can dice them, you can julienne them, you can just leave them in little rings from cutting them down. We have asparagus tips um, here. And then we have a Japanese um, eggplant that we diced or sliced. If you're gonna slice them, add a little salt to draw out some of the water from them, and then you can just wipe off the salt. And then we have some uh, beautiful figs. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is in my warm one, I'm gonna use my diced Persian. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in and use both kinds of peppers. So I'm gonna do, our diced peppers and our sliced peppers, our asparagus tips, a handful of our eggplant. I'm gonna to toss it together. I'm gonna grab a new plate. Yep. And this one's warm, so it's warm to touch. I can feel the heat on my hands. What that's gonna do is um, as it's sitting on your plate for presentation, it's gonna steam up your eggplant. It's gonna bring that, um, your asparagus tips back to being really nice and vibrant and warm. And you can see it spreads out a little bit more too. 
So don't hesitate to, you know, maybe move some things around on your bowl. Now, two things that I didn't use before that I'm going to use. You, um, I here's the figs. These figs are beautiful. What you could do is add a little sugar to them, put them face down into a saute pan, and then once they start to caramelize, then add them to your salad. Okay. I like them just raw, but um, a lot of people like them brulee like that. Um, so there's some figs. And that would be our warm salad. And then to finish off our other salad that you guys have that I forgot about was our olives. So you can just stir the olives or you could fold them in. The reason you wanna have something with a brine is because you want that salty flavor to kind of cut into the, the vinegar that we just made. How are we doing? Wait, I thought the warm one was just the, the warm couscous and the squash. Oops, I didn't know. Yeah, you can put whatever you want into the warm one. I just had some extra options. Oh. I wanted to show you guys. Um, so whenever you're doing yours, you can that... have some other options versus what we gave you. What we gave you is traditional. Okay. Um, we gave you bocatini, but feta is a, is a beautiful addition to couscous salad. Can you go over the cold one again? I didn't yeah, follow. So the cold one has um, our cold couscous. It's this one right here. It has the cold couscous with our squash that wasn't cooked. And then we had our tomatoes, our pepperoni, our capicola, our mozzarella bocatini, and our artichokes. And then we um, garnished with olives and basil. And that would be your cold one. And then on the warm one, we did asparagus tips, eggplant, um, our sweet peppers, and our Persian cucumbers. And then we garnished with some figs. I wouldn't necessarily put basil with the figs. Um, it would just combat it. Would, it would take away the, the beautiful flavor of the figs. If we don't have the olives, what we can substitute with it? Can we use like a... Um, the pepper, um, pickle, yeah, so I don't know. Pepperoncinis are a good addition. So if you can, um, if you have a bottle of pepperoncinis, and basically they're just brined peppers, um, banana peppers. So they are a beautiful addition instead of olives. I'm not a big fan of olives, so I just omit the olive. I don't put it in any of my salads. Um, but a lot of people like that nice brine, briny taste. If you don't add Olives, um, I always add pepperoncinis. Pepperoncinis. You can do um, calabrese tomatoes that have been brined in a jar, sun-dried tomatoes that are brined. Um, there's so many options to the salad. You can really add just about anything you want. And there's no other spices besides what we put in here, right? What we put in the no, dressing? No, you, you don't technically have to add anything else to okay. it. Uh, I come in at the end and I add my salt and pepper blend I just uh, would kind of sprinkle it over the top. Um, if you look by my stove, I have one of these sitting beside my stove at my house and at my dinner table. So, um, but it's just 60% salt, 40% black pepper, cracked black pepper. Um, and I just do a light drizzle. I don't do a real heavy because I don't want to take away from all the flavors you just built up in the vinaigrette. And I just want to enhance it. And that's what that salt is going to do is enhance the flavors. Got it. Especially if you're on a low sodium diet or no sodium, kosher salt, um, just a little pinch goes a mile compared to your iodine tables. And how long you can, like, for example, if you have a people, they come in over and if you make that, can you have, for how long is good to let it to sit in the fridge before you serve it? So the cold one, if I don't garnish it, I can leave it in the fridge overnight. And then just take a little bit of my vinaigrette in the morning right before service, before I'm gonna serve it and just put a little bit more on and toss it through and then garnish it. But at 24 hours, it's it's pretty beautiful, 24 hours. Okay. It's still gonna hold up. Your vegetables are cold, so they're not gonna break down. They're not gonna get real mushy on you. Um, they're really gonna be vibrant. Same with the hot one. 
if you wanted to, you could make it the night before and then just put everything back into your pot and toss it through on a saute pan, really not a pot, because of that space that you have on a saute pan. You could just toss it through to give it its warmth back or put it in a casserole dish like a pilot dish, throw it in your oven, let it slowly come up. So put it in the dish, put it in your oven, then turn your oven on to 350. When the timer goes off and says it's at 350, pull it out and it's ready to go. Oh. And then you can just kind of rearrange your vegetables to where you want them to be on your, um, for your display. But yeah, anytime you're heating up pasta, always put it in a cold oven and then bring the oven up to temp with the dish inside. And then it will um, not overcook the pasta while it's in there. As soon as it says it's at 350, pull it out, it's ready. It should okay. be nice and warm. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. What is it? It's done? Anybody yeah. else have any questions? That kind of went quick, it went quicker than I thought. Mm. How are we supposed to do the uh, artichoke? Is that artichoke? All you have to do, um, you take your artichoke, it's, it's kind of like just a, a line, just cut them straight down. So just one, two, three, four. Oh. Yeah. And then as you pull them in, they'll break apart a little bit into little leaves. Um, and then the heart of it will actually um, stay whole. So you have several different textures on your dish. You're going to have the really nice solid texture, meaty texture from your pepperoni, the soft meaty texture of your capicola, your semi-soft tomato, your um, your squash is gonna be nice and firm, um, but still soft and vibrant. Um, so you have a lot of different textures going on, which helps out a couscous salad, because then you don't, you don't want um, the same texture throughout because then it's just gonna all kind of blend unwelcome. But if you have several different kinds of textures, then everything will blend so nicely together. Michael's doing all the tasting, I can't taste right now. Um, Sean's going to do a couple of tastings. They all just make all the difference. Yeah, they all just yeah. really, that brine actually brings forward some of your flavors. Same thing, you know, if you put the feta, like maybe you don't do the olives, that feta can actually give you that same, that same flavor too. Um, right, yeah. So if you wanted to use feta, um, you could use cotilla. If you have a lot of cotilla cheese um, or queso fresco is a, is a great cheese to use because it has a little brine to it. So you could use those cheeses also. Um, yeah. The capicola, yeah. It looks amazing. So the pepperoni is what you guys made? We made the Damn capicola. It. Sorry. We made the capicola. Uh Oh, okay. I thought I don't know why I thought it was a pepperoni. Cool. No, the pepperoni. It's really from, good. Uh, margarita. Yeah, margarita really good. made pepperoni. <laughs> yeah, the capicola is what we made in house. Yeah, we make it every semester now. We make our own pancetta. We make our own capicola. We make our own corned beef. Our own pastrami now, and um, our own bacon. We don't buy bacon anymore. The students make their own and cure their own bacon. And um, we're getting ready to do uh, some our first ever aged beef. Mm. So that will be coming to you soon too. I'm sure we can put together recipes, right? Yeah, so we can send you some recipes, absolutely. <laughs> um, with ingredients and sizes. And we'll send you a list of other options that are great inside the salad. Oh, that's what I was gonna ask, okay. Yeah, yeah, so we'll send you some great options. Yeah. What class do you want to make the sausage in? <laughs> um, that <This> would be <laughs> garmage. Yeah, so we're getting ready to make it over the summer. So it'll be a fresh batch in the summer. So keep an eye on your email. If you see... Will these be available to purchase? I'm sorry? Will that stuff be available to purchase? That's what we're, um, that's what we're working towards. Yeah, so yeah. we're working okay. towards that. Yeah. So you'll be able to come in and purchase some capicola from us. 
and, and they asked about cooking the meats in squash. You missed how you cook the meats in squash. I think the answer is you can cook them if you want or you don't have to. Yeah, so Mike was just saying um, behind the camera there, if you want to cook the meat, you can. It's as simple as don't add anything to your pan because all of the rich fats that are in your uh, capicola, it's going to give you enough to um, medium to go ahead and cook both of them together. And you would saute them really quick. We can actually move to the stove and like, uh, I'll use your saute pan. So we'll take a little bit since we have some time and we'll, I'll show you how it sauteed in the pan. Is it clean? Pretty clean? That's fine. And then how, how long can this sit in the fridge for before you recommend us not eating it anymore? If you're not going to eat it today, I think tomorrow night will be your last day. Okay. Yeah. It, it won't get unsafe. It's just going to get mushy. Right. It's just going to start to break oh, Okay. Down. So it's something you should eat right away? Yeah. yeah. So today or tomorrow, it will still have some really nice integrity. But then if you wait a little longer, you're going to see that pasta start to really break down. And then your vegetables will go shortly thereafter. Um, when you go to cook your meat, because of all that fat, do not start in a hot pan. Start in a cold pan. So this pan wasn't, it was cold. It wasn't, um, wasn't hot at all. And I'm going to bring them up together. The reason you want to do that is so this fat has a chance to render out before it caramelizes. Because we want it to all come together smoothly. We don't want it to... Um, I think it's been cold, so I forgot. Kind of go too fast. You know, I think the um, if you had the ingredients for the cold salad and um, you were doing the warm salad, uh, yeah, uh, um, like I don't, you, know, you don't, you don't necessarily, you don't need to cook your any of your vegetables or any of your meats for the warm salad, um, or or for the cold salad. So the warm salad is all about the couscous being warm. And then that vinegar, uh, those, those flavors really just having a big pop with the, the, um, the couscous being warm. Uh, so, but but you, you can certainly, in your cold salad, cook your stuff and then cool it down and add it. Um, As you're doing the warm salad and you want to cook everything up, have your pasta ready and warm. Put a little bit of your vinaigrette on it that you've made while it's still warm. And then come back and saute everything up. And then we'll um, put it into your salad. So you can see here it's kind of brown. I'm going to turn this down. I'm going to put it in the block and I'll put two of the steaks in the salad. Off the salad. Oh. There you go. So the we have a cold, we're all that flavor and that oil. So now what I'm doing is just some of our squash because they don't take long. I want the flavors to combine together and then I'm just going to lay my cakes down. You can also, if you don't want to use cakes or cakes are super expensive at the time, go ahead and use grapes. Black, cheese, and grapes are a great tradition. Huh? You did not use any oil or butter, just the no. one fat from the meat. Yes. <laughs> fat from the meat. Now I turn off my heat, I'm not even on heat, it's just the residual heat. I'm laying my squash down, which you can use a fork. But, um, just give a little curl in addition. You can see it's coming, so I just want it to go finish. There we go. Okay. Just want to get a nice little curl, 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 this is all done. Okay, we'll come back over here. I'm not going to get rid of the fat just yet. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of the that I have. I'll come back into one of my bowls. Put my, my couscous in the cup. 
I'm gonna break it up a little bit. I still always start with my vinegar before I put in my cooked meats or my cooked vegetables. Okay, if I don't want the big chunk of garlic, I just pull it out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just kind of push it over. I don't want to pour it out because I don't want all that fat, but I do want some flavor from it. So Smells amazing. I don't know about you. You're, you're not. The Coca Cola smells like insanely delicious right now. So I think so. So she didn't drain the fat out, but definitely scooped some of that fat out right. when she poured it in. So. Yeah, so now that's cooked and I have my my caramelized fig and you can see the little difference between a caramelized and a regular. Um, it just, it looks beautiful. It smells divine. Like, oh, <laughs> but see, it's, it's super quick to put together as long as you have everything kind of what we call mise en place out. You can do that the night before or days before. Um, seven days are your limit. So if you want to cut everything up on Saturday to do for Monday, you're more than welcome to do that. If you want to do things on Thursday for a Monday or Tuesday, you can do that. Seven days and out. We're not guaranteeing that it will last seven days, but that's the rule as far as safety wise. Once you cut it, you have seven days to use it. Um, it could go about a couple days before that. Typically tomatoes is like three days and you're done. Um, so that's why we gave them to you guys whole. But yeah, so then you have your, your, your salad here and you can do a little bit more chiffonade if you wanted, or just pick your most beautiful leaves and kind of stud them in there. Open them up, let them, let them show. Right? Yeah, we go nice and thick. yeah, so that's gonna be really, um, a really nice simple salad too. Um, we call them salads because that's what we use them for, but realistically it's it's a side dish. It could be a main entree if you wanna add lamb, like do a rack of lamb and put it on the same dish. There's an entree for you. Um, yeah. You can do a number of things with couscous. It's yeah, just so the veggies thing. would get soggy and. Yeah, so. Um, Got for a couple days. Yeah. Any other questions? How would you guys do? Does anybody have uh, want to show us your dish? I really liked it. My kids actually liked it. And I didn't think I was going to. Like, just looking at it, I was like, I would never order this. But it tastes really good. So thanks, because you took me out of my comfort zone. It came out, I don't know, I think it came out okay. You guys yeah. can oh. see that at all. Oh, oh, how do you do that? No, no. <laughs> I wow. not, mine does not look like that. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I know, mine don't need to. <laughs> mine looks that. like this. You can't even see it. Oh, Let me I take this back right now. That's, that's mine. <laughs> Sarah King. Yeah. I don't know how to show you mine. What am I doing on this? Dominic, I'm unmuted. <laughs> they look great. Yeah. You guys did a good job. Um, like I said, um, these are these guys are gonna take these home, but um, yeah, it's beautiful. I'm taking mine to work tomorrow for the staff. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. What do you think, Johanna? She's like, oh, she's eating it. it. <laughs> I'm eating it. It's good. I yeah. like it. Yeah. I put more, a little more garlic in it. Yeah, so you can definitely mince up your garlic. Uh, the reason I do the smashed garlic is because um, I don't want the bitterness from the garlic to come into the vinaigrette. If I mince it up, I run the risk of putting too much garlic and then making the vinaigrette bitter, um, which is kind of harsh to get rid of once it's in there. So yeah, and you can also make your vinaigrette days before and leave it in your refrigerator or on your counter for a day, then put it in your refrigerator. Because what it's gonna do is it's just gonna get more and more flavor. So your, your garlic will come out more. 
Um, your dried herbs will come out um, a little bit more and more vibrant. Yeah, but always give your um, dry herbs a chance before you put that vinegar in, because as soon as the vinegar goes in, it stops the process of absorption. It kind of becomes a barrier. Tanya, thank you so much. That was awesome. I enjoyed it so much. So I'm going to sign up for your class right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we, um, we're hoping we can do more of these classes um, on campus when everybody comes back. You guys can come on and do them here in-house with us. So that's the goal. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, you're more than welcome. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So that was fun. Any other questions? Any other things you want to know? Yeah, yeah. next recipe. Let's have the next class. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Todd? Keep your hand up. Yeah. It's, beautiful... it's like watching Food Network, but better because you actually, you actually you ask questions. <laughs> Question. Um, for the Coca Cola, we can add that to the salad cold without having to cook it. Yeah. It's, 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 it's cured. more or less cured, right? It's yes, it's, it is cured. It's not more okay. or less cured. It is cured. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. We cure it for, um, it's a dry cure in the refrigerator for four months. Yeah. So we start it in the beginning of the semester, and by the time we're done, they're ready to come out. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. You're most welcome. You know, uh, some other additions real quick that you could do is, like I said, with my warm one, I do rice wine vinegar. You could do uh, baby bok choy and some hearts of palm, and then add in some Szechuan peppers to um, give it a little bit different kind of flavor versus the Mediterranean flavor. Um, it's also great. Goes well with salmon if you love salmon. Okay. Well, if you guys don't have any more questions, we ended a little early, but um, yeah, we went through three salads, which is good. <laughs> <laughs>